You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where every week Marta and Anna abandon their five children, two partners, and one cat to make a show especially for you. An artist, a challenge, a bullshit, a wisdom, and a surprise. Tune in and feel the magic of five. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and this is You've Got Five Options show. Yes, it is. And today we are recording the very last radio show in 2019, although for all of you, you will actually hear it at the beginning of 2020, right? So welcome, guys, to the absolutely new decade. <laughs> 2020 <laughs> is on Hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> very good, Marta. You you catch that very <laughs> well. Yes. So it doesn't matter that we recorded this in 2019 because you are listening to this in 2020. My God, are we are going to be living in 20s. Yes. That's so weird to say, you know, when I think 20s, I think about some... Things I saw once on an old movies channel. Okay, that's not relevant. What is relevant is that today we are having a very special show. And yes, I know I use the word special way too much on our uh, radio show. But today we actually do something completely different than we usually do. We will watch ourselves on TV and comment on that. And Marta, why are we doing that? So just that you don't think that we are absolutely weird, which we know you do anyway. <laughs> yeah, but it's so. not only about watching ourselves. No. It's actually about uh, watching ourselves as we were interviewing. We were actually running around like headless chickens mm -hmm. in TEDx Orhus 2019. Yep. Doing quite some nice shows backstage stories. Yeah, backstage stories, exactly. And uh, guys, we have interviewed almost all the speakers. We have found uh, volunteers from the audience. We talked with organizers. We were running around, uh, us and, uh, and a cameraman, and uh, we have a footage, raw footage that proves that we were there and that we actually know something about something and that something is interviewing people. And what we will do now today, we will actually play you some clips from TEDx Orhus. For those of you who see us on TV or on the internet, uh, you will also be able to see those clips, not only listen to them. And then we will reflect back in a studio, because we are in a studio, on our journey with the speakers and with TEDx Orhus. How does it sound? We will also reflect on it because we like reflecting, right? Yeah, we will love to reflect. Uh, but guys, seriously, it's probably one of the biggest nightmares to watch yourself on TV. <laughs> I definitely and, uh, have yeah. a radio face. Yes, I also have a radio face. <laughs> At least this is... It, it, there, are, there is a living proof in front of me that I have a radio face. But it doesn't matter because uh, it's, it's too late. We will show it on TV. Yeah, we have no shame. Yeah, but let's not make it about us. Let's make it about the speakers. Uh, fantastic people. We had a true, uh, it was a true privilege and honor to actually be able to talk with, with them and to ask them about their challenges, uh, the wisdoms they learned, the bullshit, the surprises, you know, the drill. That's our show. Uh, it was a great time. And regardless of our radio faces, I think... Uh, this will be our one of our most significant shows yet. I agree with that, and I really also wanted to take uh, to take the opportunity to thank Lesse, mm -hmm. who has actually taken a whole day out of his weekend, yeah, and absolutely voluntarily has totally. come to join us, and he was running after us mm -hmm. with the camera and recording all that. So thank you so much, uh, Lesse. Yeah, so basically Lasse is the man behind the camera. And of course, Dennis is a man behind the computer today recording us as well for you guys. So I think the best way would be to just start with an introduction that we have recorded from TEDx Orhus, especially for you guys. 
All yeah. good? Hello, everyone. This is Marta. And this is Anna. And this is You've Got Five Options show. And we would like to welcome you not from the radio station, but from... TEDx Aarhus, guys. Marta, wow, what an excitement. I forgot my poker face, sorry. TEDx Aarhus, guys. Yes, so <laughs> as you can see here, we have... Uh, some slides because TEDx is asking like always very serious questions about life and human existence uh, so we will be definitely covering that because in this show you will hear all the interviews with the speakers we actually managed to agree with organizers that we will interview all of the speakers um, so you will know what they really think behind the stage yeah yeah definitely tune in guys all the 11 speakers of, of TEDx or who's are going to share their wisdom, their challenges, maybe something more than that. Maybe, maybe, if we will make them or if we will give them some good alcohol. <laughs> that's my that's my backup plan, actually, <laughs> for the speakers, yeah. Yeah, but we are super excited, so guys, stay tuned and listen to the most amazing um, episode so far, TEDx, Orhus, and you've got five options. What yeah. a connection. And by the way, guys, as you can see, we also manage after two years, oh my God, I have to get used to with this microphone. We managed to get our own t-shirts with the logo. So this is how people can recognize that this is us. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited. I'm actually, I'm still a little bit out of my comfort zone because I have to remember to look into the camera while standing and keeping microphone in the right way. We have a hell of a day ahead of us. Yes, we do. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. Yeah. So uh, as you can see, guy, we, guys, we actually prepared a proper introduction. And uh, yeah, of course, we did not interview those speakers behind the stage, as I have <laughs> mentioned, with my rather poor English. It was supposed to be behind the scenes. Uh, what was behind the stage, Marta? I think it was a toilet. Toilet, yeah, yeah definitely. Toilet. There was toilet behind. So I would like to just uh, clarify that we have not conducted any interviews with the speakers behind the stage, uh, a.k.a. in a toilet. And now I think it's time to introduce our Artist of the Week. I think maybe we could just mention that we actually did not get one of the speakers to speak ah, to us. Ah, yes, that's true. But we got her partner in crime and that will be also revealed by the end of this episode. So I think we, we still kind of did a good job. So, Dennis, let's hear the Artist of the Week. Superman Music brings to you Artist of the Week. So, guys, it's not Dave from Supermoon that is introducing today's Artist of the Week. However, Dave from Supermoon Music was taking care of the baby when I was uh, with Marta at TEDx Orhus. So that's the very vague connection. You know, we always try to make some sort of a connection. So today's Artist of the Week are actually our speakers. So let's hear a little of a compilation and see who are we featuring today in today's episode. So my name is Andreas Hågaard Lausen. I'm an associate professor at the Technical University of Denmark and on a daily basis I work with snake venoms and developing better antivenoms against snake bite and venoming. Hello, my name is Sina Maria Hierstam and I'm a clinical psychologist with my own practice here in Aarhus. Uh, my topic was about how uh, you can have a foundation to become uh, more um, prone to be in a psycholo psychological abusive relationship. So uh, this is what was I was talking about, that, that some women especially have had a upbringing that makes them more vulnerable to be in a psychological abusive relationship. So my name is uh, Stefan and I've been talking about social benefits and people on them and how to make a better system that helps people more and is costing less, pretty much. And I run and own Center for Social Rethinking and that's where I work and that's what I do every day. Hello, my name is Casper Schmidt. I'm an assistant professor at Auburn University and I've been here at TEDx Aarhus today to talk about the fact that addiction involving pornography has become a diagnosis and the implications of that. 
My name is Sara and my talk was about how we can redesign design towards a future that works for all of us. Uh, hey, my name is Bryce Johnson. Uh, I am a hip hop dancer and my talk here at TED Talks was titled We Dance How We Live. And basically what it was about is just the fact that how we think and how we feel emotionally will be expressed as, uh, from the body, whether it's verbally or physically, and just being aware of it and understanding how we can use it to develop not just as a dancer, but as a human being. My name is Emma, and I am the local Poetry Slam champion here in Aarhus, and I did a speech about Poetry Slam and also about the joy of recreating and reinventing the things that are right in front of us. Uh, I'm Vanna and I'm an archaeologist and my talk today was about uh, how we can use the past to make our lives better today. My name is Cecilia Mai Sommer and today I talked a bit about prodigies and the prodigies we have about mental illness. I'm, I have a lot of different disorders myself so I wanted to talk about it from my point of view because I've I think there's a lot of stigma about the subject and I find it interesting to hear what people think about it. My name is Ludwig Muren, I'm a professor in medical physics and I was here to talk about uh, proton therapy in uh, cancer treatment. So, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I was laughing because at the very end I have realized that uh, the last uh, four uh, speakers or five speakers are the speakers I have not interviewed at all. Right, Marta? Yeah, that's true. You needed to go back to take care of your baby mm -hmm. uh, because Dave, he had to go and play some concert. Yeah, yeah life of a musician. Huh? But you still pulled it off and you were there for the majority. Yes, I, I missed the, the third part of the speeches and Marta, you did this all by yourself, Celine Dion style. How was it? Well, it was definitely cooler to do it with you. Mm -hmm. It was much less, uh, I felt a little bit stressed when I was uh, with it alone for a little bit. And then by then I was like, ah, oh, what the hell? I'm just going to roll with it and I'm just going to make it happen. Okay, uh, could you say that this was a sort of a challenge? Yes, that was. And that is a smooth transition to our next segment. A very challenging challenge of the week. So today we will present a couple of challenges and those are the challenges that uh, the speakers on TEDx or who's shared with us. Uh, those challenges will um, cover an array of different things, uh, stage fright, fear, uh, challenge with focus, challenge with choosing the right narrative, hell of a lot of challenges. Yeah. Yeah, I did not realize before we spoke to all the speakers how actually challenging it is to be a speaker at TEDx. For some of them, even being interviewed by us was challenging. Yes, it was. <laughs> and not because we uh, there is something wrong with us, right? Absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. But uh, guys, we have selected a couple of, of challenges. And before you will see the clips... I would like to tell you who you will actually see. So actually the first, uh, too many actually, the first person that you will see is Sina. And Sina was talking about emotionally abusive relationships and how uh, our upbringing uh, can in a way uh, make us more prone to entering an abusive, uh, emotionally abusive relationship. Sina is an authorized psychologist, psychotherapist and mindfulness instructor. And uh, she actually have released a book, I believe, like two months ago, because I follow her on Facebook. The book is in Danish, though, but I think it's a really great read if you are interested in uh, emotional uh, abuse in relationships. So uh, that will be the first speaker we will uh, we will show in a moment. And the other one is Vanna. I don't know Vanna personally, unfortunately, because she was already in the uh, segment uh, 
uh, where I was uh, taking care of my baby. But Marta, you you know Vanna, right? You you have interviewed her. Yes, I did interview Vanna, and uh, Vanna was making a speech about how to use all the knowledge that we know from the past, from the history, so that we can make our life better right now. I found her speech to be very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And she made quite some good points about how we humans are not very good in learning uh, from the past. So that was a really interesting thing. And Vanna, she is uh, an archaeologist. Mm -hmm. And she used to live in Denmark, but she has recently moved out. Okay, and she moved out from my uh, wise notes, I can tell you, to Dublin because she has, uh, yeah, she has started a research work in UCD in Dublin. Wow. Way to go, Nana. Vanna. <laughs> Vanna. Nana. Sorry, Vanna. Uh, way to go. And uh, yeah. Uh, let's share the challenges from Sina and Vanna now. Uh, Marta, yes, you so have your questions. Yeah, I know that. We have a few questions that are related more to what our audience is expecting. And one of the first questions is, what was the biggest challenge for you now on this journey of becoming a TEDx speaker? Oh, the biggest journey was a challenge, was that it is a, it's a topic that is quite important for me. It, it, it's... And it's also about very private, uh, no, well not private, but personal. personal subject for me. So how can I talk about it without becoming too private or personal? Um, and then, of course, I, I have a little stage fright, so that was also a big uh, challenge for me to to go up there and 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 for. For me, it's a very vulnerable situation to go up on stage and talk about something that is really important, meaningful and uh, vulnerable for me. Well, we could definitely experience your emotions. So thank you so much and for your courage to do that anyway, even though you have a little bit of that fright. What has been the biggest challenge for you when participating in that event of TEDx Aarhus 2019? Overcoming my fears. Because uh, uh, deciding to give a TED talk uh, was one of my biggest fears of 2019. And um, that, and overcoming that uh, has taught me a lot about myself. So I believe that here we can definitely see that the speakers that we afterwards watch and rewatch on YouTube do have a stage fright and they are vulnerable like any other human being and they actually are afraid to talk like most of people would, I guess. Yeah, that's, uh, well, they are humans, so that is expected that some of them definitely have some fears. And they have an amazing team working with them for months, helping mm -hmm. them to uh, get ready for that event. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing to watch it uh, being there. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different experience than watching it online, because the online versions are heavily edited. Yeah, very polished and it looks like, wow, we have only like people who are like, yeah, they just talk and stuff, but there is a lot of work behind it. And uh, there was also one thing that Sina said that, you know, it was difficult for her because it was a private topic. It was something that she have personally maybe experienced, uh, at least in her work with, with her um, with her clients or patients. So uh, that also has to be tough when you are actually touching upon something that is very personal to you. Well, I, I, my impression is that majority of them bring those mm -hmm. topics that are very, very close to their heart. So it must be quite a challenging thing. Yeah, but talking about polished uh, versions, one of the key things in, in, in TEDx is that the speakers, have sh actually, they have a script. They agree with the curators, the people who are actually coaching them as well on how to talk, that they will follow a certain script. So they know that it will take them this and this amount of time and so on. And a Apparently, sticking to the script is not necessarily uh, so easy for some of the people. And we have here two speakers that will talk about the challenges with the script. But before that, let's just say who they are. So number one uh, is Stefan. Number one, because I think he will be the first 
Actually, I don't know because I haven't seen that footage since two days. So I forgot. This is a double interview that you will see in a moment. So uh, Stefan is actually a very interesting person. He, um, I have a little note and I will actually read it because it, it's actually quite cool. Uh, since Stefan was a kid, seeing people who were lonely, drunk or having a difficult time in the streets affected him deeply. He has been politically active since the age of 15 and after traveling the West Bank of Palestine and walking the Cam uh, Camino, uh, the work with marginalized and homeless people has become important to him. And in 2013, Stefan chose to be homeless for six months while spending all his time with the marginalized people in Aarhus. While doing this, he built, and here probably someone would have to pronounce it in Danish, but in English it will be the foundation. And the foundation is organization aiming to help these people. And actually, uh, Stefan currently... Um, is uh, I think he's also leading a center for social rethinking and he's doing a lot of work trying to lobby in parliament, changing the rules of uh, giving people social benefits. Uh, I would really highly recommend uh, everyone to see his speech once it will be uh, on YouTube because all of the speeches will be there. And uh, it's very interesting uh, concept and idea that he's uh, propagating. And Casper, uh, the second person that will talk about his challenges, the second speaker, is actually a neuroscientific uh, researcher. And he has established early, early neurobiological markers of porn addiction, which in June 2018 led to its inclusion in the World Health Organization list of diseases opening new door for treatment of this group of individuals. So let's hear uh, from Stefan and Kasper. What were their biggest challenges? So guys, um, the first question that comes to mind is what is the biggest challenge in preparing a speech like this for a speaker? Kasper? Well, I think that it has been very difficult to prepare a script and then memorize that script I think it's very individual how you prepare for a TED talk. My curator and I um, sort of came to the agreement that that might be the best approach for my talk. And I've never before tried to speak before um, or to memorize something like 1,200 words in a word-by-word -word fashion. So that was a, quite a big challenge. Yeah, I could imagine that. What Stefan? about you, Stefan? Well, <laughs> yeah, the same. Um, one of the demands to participate was to make a script, which is, uh, I do a lot of talks and I don't do scripts. So that was um, something I have been opposing a bit. And we, um, we kind of tried to do a workaround. And, and what I found was that I tried, but it didn't work because every time I said a, a wrong sentence in my rehearsals, I panicked. So I ended up um, throwing it to the side. And obviously some of it stuck. But then I decided to just, you know, do my slides and let them be my guide. So I had like a timeline of pictures. So I knew I'm here now and I'm going here. And then I, I just spoke more freely. Um, so the biggest challenge was also getting two hours of information, which is what I usually do, down to 12 minutes. It was horrible for me because I felt like there was so much I had to tell in order to make it relevant. But uh, we had to do it, and so I did it. Yeah, actually, uh, isn't Stefan one of those speakers who admitted that he basically threw the script away? Yeah, he kind of did, and I could actually notice that he let himself go, mm -hmm. so to speak, in a sense that he started to bring more humor into his speech. You could see that it was very, very natural. Whereas with some speakers, you could actually see that they are actually saying something word by word. I think that you, you can f kind of sense it. Yeah, especially if you are there and you see it live. And the other speaker that also admitted to, uh, let's say, uh, violating his script is Bryce. And uh, you might remember Bryce from uh, an episode that we made not so long ago. Bryce was here in a studio and it was a fantastic episode. And we also decided what are the stupidest lyrics of uh, the song of all time. Uh, so if you want to go back to that episode and also learn more about Bryce's journey, please do so because he had a lot of great things to say 
about TEDx and about his own professional life. Uh, but Bryce and Sarah were also revealing their um, their challenges, and we will play it in a moment. But uh, before that, Sarah is an award-winning industrial designer, and she had a speech about, um, how can we call it, conscious design? Marta, you actually, uh, you like that speech. I like that speech. We like that speech. Yeah, she was uh, talking about uh, trans, kind of like transitioning out of human-centered Centric, design yeah. to humanity center mm-hmm. design. And I really liked uh, that her approach was very down to earth. And she was asking some goddamn good questions. Oh, yes. And showing how complex it actually is to choose your approach in being sustainable, in trying mm-hmm. to be sustainable. How how complex is that? I just remember like she was talking about cucumber and she was saying, so wrapping it in plastic, plastic is not good. But then when you don't wrap it in plastic, it's going bad quicker. So what is better for the ecosystem? Yeah, I remember (laughs) the cucumber uh, paradox. I think we can call it like that. So let's hear from Bryce and Sarah what were their biggest challenges. I think my biggest challenge was to focus because I had so many ideas about what I could talk about and the curators just kept bringing me back. So back to your core. And in the end, that worked really well. So my biggest challenge was to focus. Okay, Bryce, how about you? Yeah, I'm actually going to have to agree with Sarah. Uh, It was along the same lines. Actually, my my talk was a lesson for myself to just get back to the groove. What is it that we're talking about? What is the focus here? And and let's make sure we deliver the message. Um, Because I'm also long-winded. So I like to talk a lot. So I was like, okay, how do I consolidate this into something that's clear and concise? And so, yeah, that was my challenge. Really just like, properly formulating what needed to be said in an efficient way. Yeah, we know that Bryce likes to talk a lot. (laughs) We have had him here in the studio, uh, which was a pleasure. And he was not scripted. Uh, But now let's jump to Cecilia. And actually, I have to say, I haven't seen neither her speech nor I didn't make that interview because that was in part three. Uh, Marta, Cecilia had a very important topic she was talking about. Yes, Cecilia definitely touched a lot of people's hearts on that day. And after her uh, segment, of, uh, after the last segment was done, I actually spent quite a lot of time waiting to be able to interview her because there were so many people that were approaching her and uh, just sharing how important her speech was. Uh, Cecilia is a storyteller. And she was bringing a top. She was bringing how it is to live with many different types of mental disorders. Mm-hmm. It was so courageous. Like talking about saying something that is personal and close to your heart. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a completely new level of what she did there. Yeah, I believe so. So let's see what was her challenge. Okay, so being a TEDx speaker, what has been the biggest challenge for you? Um, like when you see a TEDx talk on the internet, you are often smitten by the speaker and um, quite, quite impressed with their talk. But you kind of forget that they've been working really hard before that eight or ten minutes where they're on stage. And that has really surprised me, <laughs> all the work. Yeah, I actually, I don't remember your question. What was the biggest challenge that you have encountered on the journey? My biggest challenge has been writing the speech and writing something that was relatable in a way because um, it's my life, but at the same time, I want other people to be able to see parts of themselves in some of it. I believe that we also have here a very important uh, aspect. Uh, Marta, you were making those interviews by the end of the day, and most of those speakers, they were simply exhausted by the entire day of, of uh, either waiting or then afterwards uh, presenting or doing the speech and then talking with people. So uh, I think we will have another the last speaker with a challenge, Ludwig, who was also very tired. Yes, yes, Ludwig was very tired, uh, yet he was very dedicated Mm -hmm. to making sure that he can have this interview with me. So thank you, Ludwig. Yes, and Ludwig is a professor at the Department of Medical Physics and Danish Center for Particle Therapy uh, in Aarhus. And he actually works on, um, he works with cancer. 
Yes, he does. He actually shared that he lost his mother to cancer okay. when he was young. And actually, he dedicated his life uh, to finding a way to help uh, cancer treatment in honor of her uh, of her life. So that was a beautiful thing.